The year was 1755, and it was Shabbat The Baal Shem Tov's wife was startled awake by yelling and screaming coming from his room. She quickly ran inside to see what was going on, yelling, Yisrael, Yisrael, what's happening? And the Baal Shem Tov sat up quickly in a jerk. He said, oh, thank God you came, Rebetzin. Thank God you came not a moment later. If you had come a moment later, I might not have woken up at all. My soul might not have returned to my body. Please, quickly, assemble all my students. Bring all the Hasidim to come here. Word spread quickly, and before you knew it, all the Hasidim were around his bed, and the Baal Shem Tov began his tale. He said, Every Shabbos, my soul soars higher during the Musaf Amida, the silent Amida of the Musaf prayer. My soul soars into these higher realms, and I learn Torah over there, which I'm able to disseminate only parts of during the Shalosh Sudas meal, the third meal of Shabbos. However, for years I've been trying to find my friend, Rabbi Nachman of Kisavar, a very big tzaddik, and I could never find where his holy resting place was. I tried everything, different prayers, meditations, holy names, anything I could to find where his soul was resting. Until finally someone gave me some clues, someone gave me some knowledge and I was able to try it this Shabbos. I tried praying with the prayers, the meditations, the holy names. And before you knew it, I found my soul soaring to high realms that I've never been before. I saw beautiful buildings of gold, crystal palaces, emeralds and rubies all over the different midr base midrashim. I went inside to the base midrashim to see what they looked like in the interior. And I saw these souls glowing with a brilliance and a fire as they engaged in Torah study. The Torah was bursting through these windows and each one was engaged in their own subject, whether it be Gemara, Agadah, Hasidus, Kabbalah, whatever it was. And I asked them, who do your souls pay homage to? Who leads these base Midrashim? And they said, our soul pays homage to the holy soul of Hashem, the soul of God, Rabbi Nachman Kisavar. He says, can you show me where his resting place is? Before you knew it, someone took my hand and started yanking me to higher and higher realms, worlds I had never seen before. And it was only getting more and more beautiful until there I was standing before Reb Nachman of Kisavar. He was donned in all white, wearing his holy talis, and his brilliance shone. It was almost too much for me to handle. I was awestruck for several moments. And I asked him, Reb Nachman, who are all these holy souls? Who are all these beings studying over here? He said, These are all the souls that I touched during my lifetime on earth. Righteous, righteous tzaddikim who had sinned maybe just once or incorrigible sinners who had sinned many times and led lives that were off the derech. And I encourage them, whether it was through words of gentle musr, to encourage them to come back, or through harsh rebuke. But all these souls eventually came back and followed in the ways of Hashem. And these are the people who study here with me now. He said, I can tell in you, Rabbi Yisrael, that you want to stay here. And you're allowed to. You know that as well as I do, that you can stay here. You can learn with us, and me and the other tzaddikim will take you to your holy dwelling place where you will rest for all eternity. All you have to do is give up your soul to the angel that is in charge of you, and you'll never have to suffer the pangs of death. You'll never have to meet the angel of death. You can just come now. All you would have to do is leave your body down there on earth. The Baal Shem Tov wavered in, it, in anxiety. He didn't know what to do. He wanted to be there so badly, but as well, he also wanted to be buried in Israel. Reb Nachman picked up on this and he said, Look, I can tell that you want your, soul, your body to be buried in Israel, the Holy Land, but it's not in your destiny, it's not Hashem's will. And I can't explain that to you now. I'm not allowed to, I'm not at liberty to. But if you stay here, I can teach you things that you've never imagined, things that you would not even understand until only much later. The Baal Shem Tov again wavered, thinking, how could I leave behind all my loved ones, all my students, you know, my dear wife, to deal with my body, to deal with the burial? I have arranged nothing for them. He was wavering back and forth, and Reb Nachman knew this, so he started encouraging him, started helping him, started to, to you know, sell it to him. And the Baal Shem Tov was so anxious, struggling with this decision, back and forth, back and forth, until it was too much for him, and he just yet let out a huge yell. And this was the yell that his wife heard and came running in to wake him up. Had she despaired a moment longer, the Baal Shem Tov may very well have just stayed there. So Reb, the Baal Shem Tov looked at his students and he said, Our soul is meant to be down here on earth. We are meant to help people, to bring people to the path. We have to stay here, we have to learn Torah, we have to do the ways of Hashem, to do Torah mitzvot. 
And if it weren't for my holy wife, my soul may not have returned to my body.